we've known each other since we were little. Uh, we started dating in college though, and we were together for eight years before we got married. Once we felt that we were financially stable and like we got a good start in our careers, then we we decided like it was time. Yeah, we were really excited and then the pregnancy journey began. I had no morning sickness, no pains anywhere. I felt pregnancy was wonderful. Noah was growing at the normal rate as expected. We had no complications there. Noah was born during the global pandemic, right? Kind of right at the beginning. He came into the world just a few hours before Easter Sunday on April 11th, 2020. So it was a perfect Easter gift for us. So we started noticing Noah's unique abilities since he was a baby, since we brought him home. So as soon as he was able to grab a hold of things, he started to line them up and sort them by size and color and shape. And we thought that was pretty unusual for, for a small baby. He started to organize things by the, uh, the order of the colors of the rainbow. We were not like trying to show him that. Like uh, it wasn't intentional and he would do these things. When we took him for his first year physical exam, we noticed that he was behind on his social skills and his communication. The doctor had noticed that as well and he recommended us to speech therapy. With the pandemic going on, it was really hard to get into a center because a lot of places weren't taking new patients in at the time. So we came across Brighton, we started right away, and they started with weekly home visits. The therapist noticed that he wasn't making any eye contact. He didn't have a good attention span and he was doing a lot of tiptoeing when he was walking. I remember her asking us if, if he had ever looked at us. And when she asked us that, like we had never, we talked about it and we had never even like really noticed like, oh, I don't think he does make eye contact. And we spent like the next few days like trying to get him to look at us and he would not make any eye contact. He was kind of rocking and twirling things all day and spinning. Um, he was blinking a lot and he liked to look at things at different angles. We didn't realize that th those could be uh, signs of, of autism or, or something that we just like had no idea about. Just before the visit, she called us and she said, uh, mom and dad, I need to talk to both of y'all. We're just gonna talk today. I'm not gonna uh, spend time with Noah. She went on to, to tell us that Noah shows some signs of, of autism spectrum disorder and that she highly recommended that we get a referral to see a developmental pediatrician. I remember sitting in a little, it was a little room with the doctor and she asked us a bunch of questions on Noah's development. At the end of the visit is when we got the diagnosis of uh, ASD, autism spectrum disorder and sensory processing disorder. This whole time we were just imagining Noah growing up, playing soccer, playing sports, doing a bunch of activities that neurotypical kids do. So we couldn't wait for all of that to happen and to hear the diagnosis it kind of just put um i think it changed like changed. it changed the way that that like we saw our like noah's future basically yeah. Um, with Noah's abilities, we thought that there was like no limit to what Noah could do. And like here the doctor tells us that there, 
there is limits, there may be limitations to what Noah can do. And I think it was, it was pretty hard. So after the visit, he started progressing a lot faster than we thought he would. His attention span got better because now with the diagnosis, the therapist was able to use like a different table scheme to kind of help him knowing that he has ASD. The therapist actually recommended the preschool to us. They said that it would actually be good for him to start interacting with other children his age. So we started looking into it. We toured the center, uh, we toured Lowell Wood. And Noah fit in really quick. Since that first day, we just knew right away that that was a place for him to be. When Noah first started at Brighton, he was really in his own little world. He was more to himself. But with the therapy helping, um, he is becoming more included with everything that's going on at school. Happy birthday, dear Noah. He is now able to sit at the table with the other kids. There was a, a time where they actually sent us a video. Noah and a classmate were running after each other and laughing. And when I saw that video, I watched it over and over and over. And I did cry um, because that was our first time seeing him interact. Shortly after he started at Lowood, um, he started to regress a little bit in, in his motor skills. At the end of the day, the teacher says, Oh, he didn't want to walk at all today and he only walked on his knees and he was even crawling saturday was even worse um he started he was only crawling and then by the end of the day he was actually dragging his legs um, across the ground so we took him to the emergency room um, he saw several doctors and they checked his bones his muscles his nerves his reflexes were working that was nothing that they could find in any scans that were wrong with them. So they just chalked it up to some behavioral um, issue and we were sent home. One of his therapists, who was no longer his therapist at that time, Nathan, he called me one day and he says, Mark, I think I know what's wrong with, with Noah. When you get home, grab a backpack and put some books in it and put it on his shoulders and then see if that will get him to stand up. I remember thinking like, he's not standing or anything. How, how is putting more weight on him gonna get him to stand? I go and grab a backpack, I put some books in it and I drop it on his shoulders. And when I lay it over his shoulders, he jumped up so fast. So Nathan explained that, that when, when I laid the weight on his shoulders, it was basically sending signals from his muscles up to his brain and back and forth to let his brain know, oh, this is where you are. And it kind of woke him up in a sense. I was at work. Dad's actually sent a video of him running back and forth with the backpack on his back. And I was really excited that Nathan was able to help us figure that out. Through Brighton, Noah gets to be part of a community that accepts him for who he is. Hi, Noah. They make sure that he's included and they let him know that he's not an outsider, that he belongs and that he matters. We are blessed that we have Brighton Center because they have taught us so much about Noah, what we can do to help him. The therapists and the teachers and, and staff, I, I've always felt that they're very invested and they all want to see Noah succeed.
as a baby, we see these abilities and we think, oh wow, he's super smart. He, there are no limits for Noah. Then we get this diagnosis and then it's like, oh, there, there is a ceiling maybe to what Noah can do. And then through all the work that we've done this far, it's we're just breaking down barriers and any limits that that we've dreamed up in our minds based on what we hear about autism, they just keep coming down and and we're back to Noah being limitless.